We've all had a need for a remotely accessible software to find radio, but our options have generally come down to either running SPY server or RTL TCP. Previously, these were about the only options we had, greatly limiting the types of SDRs that we could run remotely. Today on Signals Everywhere, I'd like to introduce the SDR++ server, a new addition to the SDR++ software which allows you to remotely access just about any SDR that it supports cross-platform on Windows, Linux, and more. This means we'll be able to use software-defined radios such as the SDR Play RSP Duo and Lime SDR completely remotely. Today's video is brought to you by Audible, the best way to listen to books on the go. Sign up at audibletrial.com forward slash signals everywhere and get 30 days free trial and a credit for a free audiobook. Cancel anytime at audibletrial.com forward slash signals everywhere. Before we hop into how to configure the server, let's go ahead and start up SDR++ on our Windows machine so I can show you how to get everything configured on the client side. Keeping in mind you need to be running at least version 1.0.5 in order for this to work. And you can see in our drop down box here that uh, we do not have the SDR++ server listed. If that happens to be the case, come down here to the module manager. We'll need to grab the SDR++ source from the available list here. And then once we've selected that, we can go ahead and give the module a name. In this case, I'm just going to name it SDR++ Server. And then we can press the um, plus button in order to add that to our list of available devices. Now at the time of this recording, you must be using the nightly release, but as long as you're on version 105 or higher, this should work just fine for you. As we check back on our dropdown, we can now see the SDR++ server source. I'm going to connect to my Raspberry Pi here on port 8080. And you can see I've opened up a window here so we can take a look at the Raspberry Pi running the server in the background. And once connected, you can see that we have a list of available sources. From the dropdown, I'm going to connect to the RTL SDR. And you can see we have all the typical settings you would generally have when you had the device connected locally. I'm going to go ahead and pick my sample rate, ensure we're enabling compression, and then I'll be using the N to 8 option. Go ahead and press play, and you will see that we are almost instantaneously connected to the RTL SDR, and that our SDR++ server running on the Raspberry Pi begins to serve us this connection. As we begin to tune around the band, you can see that the uh, window here with our SDR++ server is showing us in real time how the RTL SDR is being retuned as we move back and forth along our given RF spectrum. You'll see that we have all of the same options available to us that we would if we had the RTL SDR connected directly to our computer, and you'll see that persists for the other SDRs as well. Now from here, we're also able to take a look at how much data we're using. We can enable and disable uh, compression, as well as change the rate or um, bit depth of our particular signals that we are looking at through the RTL SDR or any of the other available SDRs. From here, let's look at a more interesting software to find radio. We're going to be taking a look at the RSP Duo from SDR Play. Once we're connected here to the Raspberry Pi, you'll see I've set my compression and 8-bit depth. From here, we're going to go ahead and select SDR Play, and you'll see that the RSP Duo is already listed, and it's giving us all of our available options, such as uh, given bandwidth for the SDR. We can also change the IF mode, gain, AGC, and other settings. From here, we can also change the antenna settings that will allow us to switch between the various ports on the RSP Duo, which happens to be a dual tuner software to find radio. With our antenna port set, let's go ahead and press the play button, and you'll see instantaneously the SDR++ server that is running on our Raspberry Pi is sending us over a connection so that we can see the RSP Duo running in real time remotely. Just for fun, we're going to go ahead and try this at a couple different bandwidths here. So you can see that we're able to do things such as listen to uh, wideband FM radio, even at fairly wide uh, swaths of bandwidth. The RSP Duo handles uh, wide bandwidth stuff quite well, and it actually does an amazingly good job on the SDR++ server as well. 
let's do something a little more interesting here. Let's go ahead and switch the tuner on our remote RSP Duo to tuner one. Here we have an HF U loop connected to our software defined radio, and we can go ahead and fire this back up without having to disconnect from the Raspberry Pi SDR++ server and simply restart the RSP Duo uh, completely remotely. So here we're going to look at a 10 megahertz span of bandwidth here. And right now we're tuned to 97.7 megahertz, but let's go ahead and move into some of the HF bands. And you can see just an amazing swath of bandwidth coming in from the SDR Play RSP Duo, again using the SDR++ server running on the Raspberry Pi. If we switch to a more manageable uh, amount of bandwidth, we can come in here and very easily do some voice and audio decoding in AM, sideband, as well as any other mode that you'd be able to listen to traditionally if you had a local connection to the RSP. In Boston, snow across. Go to hometitlelock.com, home title. And as you're going through mush, anything that's kicked up, I put some what they call. You can, uh, you need to take a, well, I'm sure you're going to have to think it's going to be growing. Let's go ahead and turn our attention to another software defined radio that really just doesn't get enough attention. In this situation, I have attached a Lime SDR Mini, and you can see it's already automatically populated here as it's been connected to my Raspberry Pi. We'll go ahead and select the bandwidth we wish to listen to, as well as uh, antenna port information, and just hit the play button to begin our remote connection to the Lime SDR. And it really is as simple as that on the client side. Now, even though this is the Lime SDR, please keep in mind that at least at this point currently, SDR++ does not support transmit capabilities, regardless of the software defined radio in question. So this is going to be strictly for receive, but I think it does the job quite well. And before we hop into how to do the installation, let's fire this up again with an AirSpy R2. Um, and it's just really amazing to see. I really want to showcase how well this automatically populates this for you, as well as how it automatically brings in all the necessary features, depending on the software defined radio that you happen to be using. Um, it really is an amazing like piece of software, and I am just astonished every time I see another major update like this to the SDR++ software. Now, of course, the AirSpy R2 works quite well and very much like we would expect, but let's go ahead, uh, just because we have them sitting here, and try out the AirSpy Discovery HF Plus as well. So once again, with the AirSpy HF Plus, once it's selected from the list, you can see it's already been pre-populated with all of the necessary settings for the HF Plus software-defined radio. Let's go ahead and tune around the band just a little bit with our HF U loop, just to get a good idea of how this is functioning over a network remotely using the SDR++ server software. System that activates the bowel muscles, so what happens is if you're on pain drugs, you tend to get constipated. So I'll, uh, I'll give him a call. I'll give him a call and... He had a number of which uh, it's supposed to work from 80 meters up, but I don't think they're that good on 80. You know, they're just too short. Let's go ahead and turn our attention to setting up the server software itself. If you're going to do this on Windows, copy the location in which you have saved SDR++ and then run the CMD command to open up your Windows command prompt. We're going to type in here CD space and then the directory to our SDR++ installation. On Windows, the command is going to be sdrpp.exe dash dash server dash s and then dash p and 8080 in this case to specify our port number. And that's really all there is to it. Now, of course, if this is going to be internet facing, you're going to want to check your internal and external firewalls. And then when connecting locally, you'll see as I did here in the corner, I pulled up the IP config command so that I could get the IP address of this second Windows computer that is being used as my SDR++ server for this particular section of our video. And, uh, 
Now in my case, to show the Linux version of the SDR++ server, I decided to go ahead and use my handy Raspberry Pi. Now if you're not familiar with the Raspberry Pi, if you're looking to use one, we're going to use the most up-to-date version of the Raspberry Pi OS, and I'm just flashing a uh, SD card that I had laying around here. Now, once the SD card is ready to go for your Raspberry Pi, we do need to open up a folder and create a file without any um, added file extension that just says SSH, so that way we have remote SSH access to our Raspberry Pi. You can, of course, use something like VNC or a display, um, whatever works best for you. But in my case, I'll be accessing it remotely using SSH in a headless configuration. Now, at the time of this recording, March 9th, 2022, this particular um, version of SDR++ 1.0.5 is only available in the nightly revision. So I will be downloading a copy of the deb file from the Nightly, and then I'm simply using the free FileZilla software to upload that file to my Raspberry Pi over SSH. Of course, you can use wget or any other method you prefer to download that file. Once you have it, we'll move on to getting all of our dependencies set up. As I mentioned earlier, I'll be using SSH to connect to the Raspberry Pi. In this case, I am using the free PuTTY application, and we're going to log in with the default credentials. The first command we want to run is a sudo apt update. This is going to ensure that all of our packages are up to date within the repository so that things are available when we go to install our individual dependencies. To make things easier, I'm going to head over to the README for the SDR++ software. We're going to take a look at this quick Debian installation example and just grab the first line here. This is an apt install that's going to install many, but not all, of the various dependencies that there may be for the SDR++ software. Now, keeping in mind once these are installed, we may wish to go back and install additional um, application libraries so that we can use SDRs such as the RTL SDR, AirSpy, and other software-defined radios. As you can see as we come down the README, there is actually a list of modules and the various uh, dependencies that they need regarding the libraries that you'll have to install for different software-defined radios. Once we do our initial installation, I'm going to come back and just add these on to the end here, so that way we have all of the uh, dependencies that we need to test out all of the software-defined radios that I'm working on in this particular video. Once we have our list of dependencies and libraries we wish to install, we'll go ahead and run this nice long command here. Uh, once this is executed, it's going to download and install all the various packages that we're going to need. And then from there, we can move on to our next step in the installation process. Now, unfortunately, you'll find that the SDR Play drivers, as well as drivers for some of the other SDRs, are not included in traditional Linux apt repositories. So I'll place links in the description below this video, but we're going to need to get a copy of the API software. Now, in this case, I went ahead and grabbed a copy that included scripts for both the SDR Play API, as well as a copy of scripts to install SOAPy SDR, so that way we would have SOAPy SDR support on our Raspberry Pi without having to do a whole lot of messing around um, outside of just running a simple script. From here, you're going to want to create a new directory and then cd into that. And then we'll be unzipping the file that we downloaded from the SDR Play folks. So that way we can access the individual scripts that we need to install both the SDR Play API and the SOAPy SDR software. Now, this particular um, set of scripts does come with far more than we actually need. So once we have everything unzipped here, let's go ahead and run the first file here. And then once this first one's completed, we'll also run the second one in the list that will uh, install our SOAPy SDR software for us uh, from that point. Once all of our dependencies are installed, we can finally install the SDR++ software itself, run sudo gpkg i sdrpp and then the rest of the file name here and that will install the prepackaged debian binary and that uh, binary will complete the actual installation for sdr plus plus from here we can now run the sdr plus plus server so this is going to be a little bit different in linux than it is under windows for linux we'll run sdrpp 
Then we'll do dash dash server and then dash p and then 8080 for the port that we happen to be using in our particular circumstance. So the only difference here is that in Linux, you're going to have dash dash server and in Windows you need dash dash server space dash s. Um, aside from that, those are the really only two differences that you have when it comes to the command line functionality between the two uh, server versions at this time. With all that being said, that's really all it takes to get everything set up. Uh, this is going to run in Windows. This is going to run under Linux. Um, generally, anywhere that's um, SDR++ functions, you're going to be able to use the SDR++ server, and it's going to be able to work with just about any software-defined radio that you have laying around. Please keep in mind that as of the date of recording, that this feature is only available in the nightly release. So if... Uh, 105 is not the current public release, be sure to get that nightly from sdrpp.org. And an enormous thank you both to all of my subscribers and my patrons. Um, I am honestly relying uh, almost completely on the income that I make on YouTube. And while it's not a lot, it is enough to pay my rent and help me out with a couple of bills. So you guys' support has been absolutely amazing. If you're new to the channel and you'd like to support, feel free to like and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you support me on Patreon, that is enormous help as well. And because this um, amazing piece of software SDR++ is available completely open source. I'm also going to go ahead and leave the link to the developer's Patreon as well. So if you'd like to support the developer of this software directly, you can do so directly from their Patreon as well. Thanks again to everyone, and I can't wait to see you all in the next one. Bye!